Welcome to the W2W Review. I am the Oakland Knight, and joining me today on Defensive Tuesday is the one and only Raider Pirate. What's up, Pirate? What's going on, Raider Nation? All right, Raider Nation, today is Defensive Tuesday. We're going to take a look at our defense, which should be a nice, long breath one. Um, there's a lot to talk about, so without further ado, Pirate, what you got for us? <laughs> Yeah, well, um, you know, the the, uh, the defense as a whole, I mean, I look back at the tape. I was able to watch the tape again last night. Um, you know, when I was watching it on TV, it looked a lot worse, I think, than it, than it actually was. And by make no mistake, it wasn't it wasn't great, wasn't good. Um, but when I when I was able to look at the all 22 uh, and see some of the things that, that the defense was able to do in some very key moments, it did give me a little bit more hope um, than I think I had when we came on it at the end of that game. There were some some stops that they made at, at, at crucial moments. Now. A few of those stops were misfires by Drew Brees, where he, you know, single hopped a couple of balls uh, out to his running back. They were really they were trying to get the ball to the back and take advantage of what I'm not sure. I think they got one positive play um, coming off of that. And I think they had like three or four incompletions, so much so right. that the announcers were saying, you know, whoever's calling that play, you know, <laughs> whether it's Peyton or his offensive coordinator, stop calling that play. You know, it's not working. Um so they were they were better against the run than I than I think that that we thought they were going to be. Um, Khalil Mack was double teamed and triple teamed, and uh, you know Bruce Irvin came up and and made some plays. Would have had two sacks. Uh, so that's what we brought him in here for. You know, the one sack was brought back, was negated by the BS penalty on DJ Hayden, where, I mean, come on, that was not pass interference. They want to say that it wasn't pass interference for Jalen Richard. Well, that wasn't pass interference either, and that would have resulted in a, in a sack. Uh, and then he had the strip fumble, uh, which we didn't capitalize on, but still we were able to get some points off of. So, you know, again, that was a good thing. Uh, you know, we played a lot of man coverage, which was which was strange. Uh, you know, particularly because of the type of receivers that True Breeze has. But everybody will tell you if you play Breeze in his zone, he'll pick you apart. He'll just he'll just you know dice you up. Uh, and he's still, you know, 22, uh, 28 for 42 for 438 yards. I mean, we allowed 438 yards of passing, uh, which is not which is not good. You know, they, they, they can't do that again. Um, you know, there were some things about Sean Smith that I saw that I didn't like. We'll get into that a little bit more. But but all in all, in watching the tape, I, I have a little bit more appreciation for, um, for what the defense did, uh, particularly, again, also in the second half. You know, they were really just kind of they, – they had some good moments in the first half, but they really kind of were getting, you know, rolled uh, during the second quarter and, and uh, into the third quarter and even into the fourth quarter when, you know, we go down there and, and we score and they just – they turn around and, and they let Drew Brees go right back down the field and score a touchdown. So um, we'll get into stats in a second, but all in all, I mean, uh, uh, from an overview – perspective uh i'm not as down on this defense as i was um when i watched it on television yeah uh, my thoughts pretty much exactly uh i, I want to start off by saying this hats off to sean payton and as well as drew Brees. you know the question coming into the season was you know is drew Brees going to peak obviously not drew Brees still has the arm drew Brees still has the accuracy the vision the knowledge of the game to read defenses and he just simply picked us apart um when I looked at the statistics, which I know you're going to get into in a minute, um, I, I think our run game uh, defense wasn't tested enough for me. Uh, we only gave up, I believe it was like 75 yards or something like that. Um, but Drew Brees was having such a field day on our corners, especially Sean Smith, which we'll get into in a little bit as well. But he was having such a field day. I mean, 
Sean Payton did the right thing and just kept attacking us in the air. I mean, we couldn't stop it. It's one of those things where, you know, I'm going to keep doing it until you till you can stop it. And, and we couldn't stop it. And that that kind of goes uh, to say on our pass rush, too, we need to get a better job getting to the quarterback. And, yes, I did see Khalil Mack triple teamed at times. But that being said, Khalil Mack needs to dig deep. Khalil Mack needs to find a way. If he's going to be an elite pass rusher in this league, he knows that he's going to get those double teams. He knows he's going to get chipped a lot. He's got to find a way to fight through that. But if that's the case, and they're going to take Khalil Mack out and put that much attention to one side of the field on one player, Bruce Irvin needs to be the one that attacks. Bruce Irvin needs to be the one that makes plays. And we, and we saw that. So I'm, I'm happy with that as well. Uh, I think we need a little bit more of it, whether it's Bruce Irvin, whether it's it's Autry, whether it's Ellis. Somebody else needs to step up because if you're, if you're putting that much attention on one player, then we need to be able to attack from somewhere else. And I, and I think you're going to see that moving forward. I, I believe that Bruce Irvin showcased that. Bruce Irvin showed the ability to do that. And I think that's going to be a highlighted note uh, for a team like Atlanta coming up that, hey, you know, we could, we could handle Khalil Mack. You know, the Saints gave us the prototype of how to do it. But what's going to be your answer for the other side then? So that's going to be interesting uh, as we go along here in the season to see how Bruce Irvin develops into the scheme and guys like Autry Ward, when we get Mario Edwards Jr. back. I mean, we're these guys, some of these other guys, and I, and I said this before the season started, you know Khalil Mack's going to get a lot of attention. We need that second and third pass rusher defensive lineman to actually step up and take advantage of their one-on-ones and beat their man. Uh, what do you got statistic-wise, uh, Pirate, or, or your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, like I said, I agree. I, I, I think that um... – I still, I still say that, you know, we did get what, at least in game number one, what we paid for from Irvin because in the preseason, we weren't getting anything. It looked like he was getting pushed around like everybody else back there. Um, so to come out right. in this game and to, you know, get a, get a strip, number one, uh, which is a good thing, and then to, you know, get the, get the sack that was negated by, by the penalty uh, is another thing. You know, once again, Drew Brees, you know, 28 of 42, 423 yards, four touchdowns. Um, that's not bending and not breaking. That's busting. That's just busting in half. Um, Mark Absolutely. Ingram, you know, 12 carries, 58 yards, had about a 4.8 average, uh, you know, had a, had a, had a one good run. Um, but, you know, generally we, we were, we were maintaining there. CJ Spiller, not in this game. I think, like you said, this would have been a different game if Spiller had been in there. Brandon Cooks even had the one run for 11 yards. Uh, Willie Sneed, nine catches, 172 yards. Uh, now, a lot of people didn't know who this kid was, but once again, this is a guy that was the second best wide receiver last year coming out of college. Now, a lot of guys were hurt last year, uh, and we saw what um, what a couple of those guys could do in, in week one. But uh, like Brashard Perriman had, you know, had some big catches and things like that. But Willie Sneed was the second best yeah. rookie wide receiver coming out of the draft last year. Uh, a lot of people heard about him last year. They made a lot of noise about him last year. Uh, nine catches, 172 yards. That's almost 20 yards. That's almost 20 yards per catch. Uh, one touchdown. Cooks, six catches, 143. That's 23, almost 24 yards per catch. So we were beat deep. And like I said, they took the lid right off this defense. I don't know. I, I'm a little bit confused because I thought the whole purpose of the cover three was to not allow teams to do that. Seemed like Dennis Allen had a much Correct. better idea on how to play um, the cover three and the cover two than we did. Uh, and uh, Cooks had the, had the two touchdowns. So, you know, when I looked at it, I said to myself, this uh, this is I, I'm not sure if it's a philosophical thing or not, but the bottom line here is that I, I believe in the middle of this defense, they're not stout enough. Therefore, the linebackers are too small. Their guys are getting on those linebackers and the linebackers being too small. And then you have a small safety uh, in Carl Joseph, who there's a lot of things being said right now. Maybe he's held out because of the knee. Maybe he's held out because he's not, you know, into the offense well enough. Maybe he's held out because you don't want to put him in there against the Drew Brees uh, and, you know, ruin this kid's career and his confidence before it ever begins because I saw him making some 
poor decisions during the preseason when you when you again when you watch the all 22 or the coaches breakdown tape um you'd see him getting sucked in these line but everybody moves too fast and gets caught out of position so what you have is you have a, a, a middle of the field that's not really they're not holding the you know, they don't have a true big huge nose tackle that's that's keeping the guards off of the linebackers which are which are smaller linebackers and I think that's why they decided, well, we've got to go with some more uh, some more girth at that safety position. Otherwise, we may be getting, you know, run all over. So I think this the, the decision that they made was really based on what, what was happening in the preseason, the, the big runs that they were allowing. And I think that they kind of just wanted to prevent that from happening. But by doing that, um, you put a lot of pressure on that back end. And like I said, it, it didn't bend. It 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 broke. No, and you brought up a lot of interesting points, and I'm going to touch on some of this real quick. Um, you know, as a whole, once you look at the defense again, I mean, it busted, right? It busted. Um, the safety position was something that, that was a concern, you know, especially when you're looking at the cover three. A lot of it had to do with the style of quarterback and the style of offense we played, and I get it. So I, I'm not going to judge the call of playing more man, man coverage on the outside. But last year, we saw this team consistently play back, play that true cover three, uh, Woodson was flying all over the place. They were playing drop back. They were giving them everything underneath. But I think the speed of these receivers, the ability for Drew Brees to get rid of the ball quickly and read it and get it into his playmaker's hands and space uh, caused us to come up. And, and that was what was crucial. Once again, we'll, we'll talk more about Sean Smith in the second half here of the show. But, you know, that was what was key on that big 98-yard touchdown pass. Uh, I, I think you, you game plan all preseason to be that style of defense, play a little bit of mixed coverages, but primarily in the zone and drop back off these guys and, and give them everything underneath. And you're expecting your pass rush of that. I'm a true believer. There was a couple of things happening. Number one, you know, they, like I just mentioned, the Drew Brees' style of offense, his ability to get rid of the ball quick, get it to his playmakers in space. And let's face it, we struggled against the run majorly in preseason and it was a concern heading into this game and when you look at the running backs that they presented even though without cj spiller there you still had mark ingram who's a big power tough runner up the middle followed up by tim hightower as well so you know this is something i think they they wanted to put an emphasis on they didn't want us to get ran on but unfortunately you know the combination of focusing on the run and playing these guys man coverage uh these guys were brought in to be man coverage corners Amberson and Smith were not brought in to be man coverage. I think that's the other reason why they went to Hayden, and we'll get into that as well in the second half. But um, I just think it was it was a poor game plan. Now, the positive thing as we get ready to go into the second half and into break, it's only week one, right? So like, like I said yesterday, you don't know what you're going to get at week one. It's your really, you know, talk about your dress rehearsal game. This was your full, complete dress rehearsal game where you're, you're game planning, you're trying to figure your defense out and line it up correctly. You throw it out there on the field uh, in a week one scenario where you're playing four quarters for the first time all season. And it's going to take time to even get the rust off, to get things flowing and gelling. And even though we didn't see what at least I personally expect from this defense this year, um, I did see some promising things moving forward that's going to allow us to become that kind of defense. And the way the offensive offense played and being able to put up 35 points and I, and I said before this week one matchup, all we need is 20. You give a, you know, you could put up 20, 20 points and this defense can actually make some stops. You know, that, that gives us a shot week in and week out. So to be able to put up 35, this defense is going to come alive. This defense will be able to make stops at some point. We've seen it in, in the preseason they, at times they, where they really shined. And it starts up front. They've just got to get the right personnel. They got to go back to playing that true cover three. And I, you know, the safety position is something that they need to look forward to. Yeah, we went with some bigger safeties, some guys that could really play inside the box. Once again, I, I think that was primarily for the run game. But once again, Drew Brees lit us up, man. We just did not have the answer. So, you know, as, as we go continue uh, with the show in the second half, we're going to start getting into some of the players uh, personally. You know, guys like Sean Smith, guys like Ben Heaney. Um, I want to talk a lot about the safeties and Keith McGill primarily. Um, and what he was able to do, uh, Nate Allen was coming in at times, and this defensive front. So as we go off to break, uh, just keep that in mind. When we get back, we're going to start breaking down some of these players, some good, some bad, some ugly. And just stay tuned, and we'll be right back right after this break.
All right, welcome back to the W2W Review. We are having a Defensive Tuesday. We just got done in the first segment talking about the defense as a whole. Now it's time to start talking about the players as individuals inside this defense on Sunday. You know, some of the good, some of the bad, and what have you. So, Pirate, what do you got for us today on that front? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, you know, like you said, we we kind of want to look at this and, and understand that, you know, this was a game based on the preseason. We, we, we could have come out. We could have come out rusty. Um, you know, we did a lot of changes along this defensive line. Carl Joseph started the entire preseason. We had a different starter in there, actually, and Keith McGill coming into the game. Um, you know, we were horrible against the run. I think we we were able to at least um, be when they wanted to run. We were we limited them, and and that was good. This wasn't a team that was focused on running, but still, you know. And and the fact was that it, it was week one. We were in a very hostile environment. It, that's a hard place. The Saints have struggled. Over the last uh, last season, they struggled <clears throat> a little bit, but that's still an extremely difficult place to play against a Hall of Fame quarterback. Um, you know, this this defense, that's probably one of the toughest tests that you're going to face the entire year. So that's that's kind of a good thing. The San Diego games, I'm sure, are going to be tough. Uh, Cam Newton's going to present a different type of a challenge. But you just came out of week one against Drew Brees. And yes, you know, you broke, uh, but at the end of the day, we came away with a win. And that was the most important thing. This defense came, they, they, they went to New Orleans, they played against a great, great, great player, uh, and they made some plays, like I said earlier, when they had to make those plays, when they had to limit somebody, when they had to make a tackle, you know, David Amerson, like you were talking about making that great tackle on Cook, uh, you know, caught the ball in the open field and he was able to wrap him up and, and drop him. Uh, I think with some defensive adjustments and, and for whatever reason, this is what they thought was going to work. I mean, you can't we can't look back on it and question these guys and. You know, why the heck would you do this? Why would you match up a guy like Sean Smith against a guy like Cooks or or even Sneed? You know, these are smaller, shiftier, faster type of guys. If they get past you like like uh, uh, Cooks did against Smith, you know, it's it's goodbye. And if you're playing man coverage, you no longer have that safety up high because he's worried about where the tight end's going or how to bracket or do whatever it is and uh and you get what it is that you got so um once again this is the you know it, it's week one you got to shake off the rust it's it's a real game these are real bullets and um it hopefully it only gets better you know from here latavius murray said before i go latavius murray said that they were telling Jalen Richard, oh, yeah, your first run from scrimmage was, you know, was a touch, a 70-yard touchdown run. Yeah, it only goes downhill from here, you know. So hopefully for the defense, it's the opposite. Oh, okay, you gave up uh, this much to uh, the Saints. Okay, well, it can only get better from here, hopefully. Uh, and that's, that's, that's just kind of like my overall take on that. No, absolutely. And, and that's, that's the whole point. That's, that's what week one's about. You know, I say all the time, it, it takes the first four games, the first quarter of the season for your team to really kind of get into a zone. Now, some teams, you know, Patriots, Packers, you know, teams that have been doing it for a while, their system, the coaches are the same. They could come out swinging a lot, a lot harder, a lot faster. Uh, we're, we're still in a rebuilding kind of mode, right? We've still got a lot of new young nucleus players that we have to develop and fit into the scheme. So it's going to take some time for them to start really gelling as we move forward. But again, like you said, they made stops when, you know, some key stops that was enough for us to win the shootout. And that's all we needed. You know, yes, it was a heart attack game. I was on the edge of my seat, but at the end of the day, they can only go up. They can't get any worse than they were last Sunday. So that's positive moving forward. Now, I want to start off with Sean Smith because I think that that's the elephant in the room here. I mean, he had a bad day. Jack Del Rio talked about him having a bad day and Jack Del Rio absolutely admitted that they basically benched him because he was just having a tough day. But Jack Del Rio followed it up with saying he knows he's going to have a lot out of Sean Smith. That's a great player. He just has a he had a rough day and everybody has a rough day every once in a while for the style of, of play that he plays him and Emerson both. Now, Emerson wasn't picked on a whole lot. You know, they saw a weakness that Sean Smith was struggling and they kept attacking him. 
and and the main reason he got benched was I mean he was and it wasn't just about, about the one play I mean he was getting lit up all game but that 98 yard touchdown pass to Cook he you know he's playing man coverage he's on the line and he didn't bump him at all he didn't throw him off at all which let probably let Jack know that you know they're in his head they just they just got him right now and, and maybe we make that change you brought up a good point in the live after show that you know they played Hayden because Hayden has more speed than Sean Smith and when you're going up against these these fast wide receivers you know you got to try to match them somewhere and, and that was the answer that was the answer they went with and you know he, he got a lot of PIs you know he struggled a little bit but I think I, I think what you saw was it did slow them down enough to give us the opportunities we needed so I'm going to give the coaching staff kudos and being brave my only concern I guess moving forward is you know you guys remember D'Angelo Hall we brought him in we brought him some good money and just things started happening that weren't wasn't a great start and he ended up developing this attitude um have not heard any reports to this this point about sean smith and his attitude about being benched but i think he's a true professional i think you know this team's nucleus the way that they're they're a family oriented type team it's going to be fine moving forward i just hope that this doesn't spin off into another d'angelo hall type situation because i do believe sean smith has a ton to offer to this defense we saw all preseason he was around the football blanket coverage making plays he had some missed opportunities on some interceptions, but I think the, the future is bright for Sean Smith in this defense. Your thoughts, partner? Yeah, I, you know, watching that, uh, I also watched that on, on, on the breakdown. You know, Cooks faked him to the inside, and Sean Smith's feet are just, they're not. Uh, DJ Hayden, when you watch DJ Hayden play, he's got extremely quick feet. Uh, he's able to take the juke and recover from the juke he's got that quick twitch fiber he can't turn back and locate the ball to save his life and and he does make some pass interference plays reminds me a lot of stanford route in in that sense um but he has those those quick twitch um you know uh he's he's able to to stick with a guy when a guy's trying to juke him well cooks pops to the inside you know smith starts to go to the inside right because again you're going to keep the sideline as your friend and try to keep this guy to the inside but uh, i mean once he gets turned he goes to to reach him out and that's when cooks hits up toward the sideline now sean smith obviously is thinking okay i gotta keep this dude you know keep him out of the middle of the field because i got mad coverage so the sideline is my friend but unfortunately once he opens and Cooks got past him, the sideline was no longer his friend. And Drew Brees just put that ball directly over the top. It was like the the throw that Derek Carr made uh, to Michael Crabtree was in, uh, indefensible. And, and this guy's a lot bigger than Cooks is. He just, he just rainbowed that right into him. The sideline is your friend if you can stay stride for stride with the wide receiver. That yeah. wasn't the case with this uh, in, in this case. But something that really is uh, that I'm questioning, not a lot of people are talking about, what the heck is going on with Williams? I mean, apparently something's going on here. Williams only had 15 snaps on defense. 15 snaps. You, you compare that with 67 by McGill, Mack, Amerson, Irvin. I mean, these guys were all up in the high 60s. And uh, Dan Williams has 15, 15 snaps. So uh, he's splitting time with a number of guys. Latham had a lot of snaps. Latham had 25, uh, uh, 25 snaps there. Again, that's 10 more snaps than Dan Williams. An undrafted rookie has 10 more snaps than Williams. And if you look at Stacy McGee, he only had three snaps less. And McGee started the game. So what is going on here with Dan Williams? I still think it's trial by error at this point, uh, Pirate, you know, but I, I, I don't get it. It's it's a head scratcher to me. Dan Williams was the sole reason that this we had such great run defense early on last season. Uh, the experiment time is over. Uh, it must be a conditioning thing. Maybe it's an attitude thing. You know, I, I don't know what's going on, but I hope they, they find a way to fix whatever's wrong. If, if it's an attitude thing, you know, let's get Derek Carr involved. Let's get Khalil Mack involved. Let's, let's calm the situation down. If it's a conditioning thing, then, you know, we have to believe that the coaching staff is making the right move. But this is a very large man, a guy that can really control the middle of the offensive line and give these linebackers the best opportunity, in my opinion, to come fly around and make plays. We're already small and light at linebackers. So why Dan Williams is not getting this, 
enough attention uh, to be a starter or even a major point in the middle is beyond me. Uh, it's something that I can't put my finger on, but I, I really believe if yeah. moving forward, yeah. this is something that, that has to be addressed. And I'm hoping that guys like Scott Bear can ask that question to Jack Del Rio and they pick up on it too, because this is something I want an answer to. I, I want an answer to what's going on. What's the real deal with Dan Williams? Because if you don't go and play a season like you did last season and then just get dropped off, you know, the next season, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it conditioning at this point, he should be conditioned, right? So it, it's got to be an, yeah, but, problem. but, but he, but he, he is on the record as saying, and, and I don't know if this is, again, this is an attitude thing. Like with CEO Moore, he's on the record is coming out and saying that the coaches were maybe not truthful in saying that he had failed some conditioning tests. I mean, is that I, I, I'm hoping this is not an entitlement thing where he's, you know, oh, I'm a starter, I'm inked in and he comes in overweight and the coaches kind of get on him and let him know, hey, you saw what we did last year with some guys that didn't want to be here or, or didn't want to be totally committed. And, and I'm wondering if it's an attitude, because why would you come out? And again, we don't know. This is this is purely speculation. But based on the fact that the guys only played 15 snaps and it's not a conditioning issue, it's not a medical issue. And you've got a lot of money sunk into this guy. It almost, you know, Occam's razor, right? right. I mean, the 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 easiest answer seems to be that it would be some type of an attitude problem. And we've seen this coaching staff put guys in the doghouse before. So we're going to need this guy. And I hope, I hope, you know, the defense played so poorly overall that I think that a lot of people are overlooking the fact that Dan Williams just wasn't in there. No. Yeah. And I, and I agree. And, and moving forward, you know, we, we have to get this thing right. I, I, we're going up against an Atlanta Falcon team, which we'll be breaking down throughout the week. But uh, this is an offense that, that struggled last week. But once again, it's week one. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Okay. This is an offense. I don't know too much about their offensive line. Uh, we'll be looking into that this week, but they got weapons. They got Julio Jones. They got Freeman. They got Coleman. They got, you know, Matt Ryan, who's, you know, he's hot and cold. They call him Matty Ice, but, I mean, he's hot and cold at times. But if this offense comes out clicking, we got to be ready for the run game as well as the passing game. So, you know, I just think that Dan Williams is a fit there. But then again, I'm not at practice. I'm not in the meeting rooms. I don't know what's really going on. But moving forward, that's exactly what we need to focus on is the middle of that defensive line. I mean, I know they want to generate pressure with a lot more speed and kind of pass rushing type defensive tackles. But, you know, we can't sacrifice that run game. We got lucky this week in, in one sense, you know, but like, like we said, there's no way that you, you get any worse than last week. So that's, that's something to look forward to. And if the offense continues to shine, we don't need a whole lot, like a whole, whole lot from this defense early on. We just need to be able to make some really key stops uh, when we have to, to give the opportunity to the offense. So, that's going to be our time for today, Raider Nation. Uh, we really want to appreciate all the love that we've been getting this week here on this channel. Uh, continue to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can email us at the W2W at gmail.com. That is the W2W at gmail.com. And don't forget, show us a little bit more love. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Make sure you share this in all social media sites. Uh, we are doing our best to give you as much Raider content as we can. And moving forward, we're excited. You guys are excited. The after show was a lot of fun. We're expecting another great win from this Raider organization. So we're, we're looking forward to another great live show. So for the Raider Pirate, I'm the Oakland Knight. We will see you guys tomorrow. Until then, you stay Raider strong. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Jason Smith, also known as the Oakland Knight. We'd like to thank you for watching the Will to Win broadcast here on YouTube. And if you would like to stay up to date for more content like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Or you could click any one of the videos on the side to watch more great videos. Thank you once again, and stay Raider strong.